time periods of armor and how they fit. But there's a lot of things that if you start to look at how the armor works, you'll start to understand a lot of stuff about Bujinkai. But just, just for example, like shoulder range of motion. Like if my arms out the side here, they're not going up any higher than this. This is digging in quite good. Yeah, I can bend my arms up like this, but that's as far as I can get. I can't get my elbow next to my ear, which most of you can do if you're not wearing armor, right? Mm -hmm. So understanding the way this movement. Also understanding things like this. So if I take this and I go, for instance, here, you see how it turns his whole body like that? <laughs> but if I do the same thing on Windsor, it doesn't affect his spine at all. So you start to look at things a little bit differently. Okay, of course, the weight of the, the helmet on your head. So, so if, if you're doing something like this, right, you can see you're not going to do this. Thing either. But if you're doing this, and I want to see how that helmet now is tipping him forward. He's going to have a hard time just whipping back up and coming around here. Does that make sense to everybody? So you have to look at these pieces. So as, as you guys can see with the, uh, the helmet on, there's a lot of techniques that are totally possible that were not possible without it. And when we were just talking about the onikodaki, you know how whenever someone comes and do onikodaki, you're like, well, I'll just punch you in the head here. If I have a helmet on and gear, I go ahead and punch me in the head. Right? So if I'm wearing the helmet, and then you're having hair, and I do this, so what if he punches me in the back of the head with the helmet on? That's not going to do anything to me. But what I can do here is take out this piece. When I do that, you see how doing this kind of stuff that only could have can actually work. So, just make sure I'm for a minute. I'm going to ask you guys some questions now. So a lot of people have been training here like 20 years, 25, 30 years, long time. Where does the techniques that make up the Bujikan come from? Where's it come from? Anybody know? Weapons. Okay, weapons, but battle, warfare. Excuse me. Warfare. Battle, warfare. So, during the time period of Japan's War and States period, where were the battles fought? Ah. On a battlefield. What was happening on the battlefield? Armor. Armor yes. and yes. weapons. Yes. What kind of weapons? Fixed. Length weapons generally swords, spears, bows, arrows, of course. Right? How much Muay Thai kickboxing is going on in the battlefield? How about Gracie Jiu Jitsu? None? Western boxing? On the battlefield? Come on, guys. No Gracie Jiu Jitsu. So, not, not, a lot of, not a lot of MMA stuff happening, right? So, how much of the battlefield stuff was unarmed technique? Unarmored, unarmed technique. Just before death. Just before death. If you're the dude with no armor and no weapon, you're probably going to die. <laughs> right? So, if that is the foundation of Bujikan, does everybody agree that that is the foundation of Bujikan? Mm -hmm. It's pretty simple. I mean, we've all been told that. We all know that, right? Well, no. Hmm? Thank you. Actually, it's actually from within the palace. And within the palace. Mm -hmm. That's right. So, That's right. Some so there are some other things in there too, right? But what situations are they for? They're very specific situations, are they not? Mm -hmm. And so is the battlefield stuff. Yes, yes. So we have something that we call the Kiyo Hapo, our basis, right? Mm -hmm. and, and all of you have trained before, and you know that I, I show ways of doing Kiyo Hapo that are different from the ways that everyone typically learned Kiyo Hapo. Did everyone know that? Mm -hmm. Anyone surprised by that? <coughs> so, why don't I teach the regular Kiyo Hapo? Does anyone know? I'm not walking around the room. <laughs> so, well, they've changed, but not the human body hasn't changed since then. So, if I bring Trevor up now, and we look at some Kiyo Hapo, like Omote Yaku, right? So, as he grab, what is he going to grab for Omote Yaku? 
he's grabbing this. Now, is the palm of his hand armored? No. No. So when I do this and I go, how does that feel on the hand? Side starts biting. It just starts digging in, right? So now, if he's got a helmet on and stuff and he's heavy like I was just a second ago, notice he's he's gonna stop himself, he's not gonna fall down, he's training armor. Mm -hmm. But do you guys notice anything out there in here? How about the fact that he's not desperately trying to let go of this because he's in a bad position. So as he lets go, and we have something here called the cote. Now this cote doesn't actually come up across the back of the hand, but a lot of versions actually go up to the knuckle here. Okay. So you can actually smash with the back of the hand. So now, I grab the cote, and he's struggling to regain his balance, so he regains his balance, and I go, well, look familiar? Yes. So, don't grab this whole and snap the hand, right? So, we go. Did anyone see that on the take version? So we've all done that before, right? <laughs> now, if I pick up Joel, And Joel grabs, and I go, what does Joel do right now in our life? Punch me in the face. <laughs> Why? Because he's not wearing armor. So is it wrong to do the technique that I just demonstrated with Jeff? No. Is it an ineffective bullshit technique? No. Not if you're wearing armor. Not if you're in the right context. How many of you, through all the years of your training, said to your students, now, nah, this is a technique for armor. This won't really work if he's not an armor. How many people say that? Mm -hmm. No, nobody says that. Mm -hmm. Included in Japan. 